Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, September 11th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The Pentagon is looking for ways to counter threats from China and other adversaries. And it's turning to a vast network of AI-powered technology, drones, and autonomous systems. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks has provided new details about the department's plans to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to produce an array of air, land, and sea-based systems. Our correspondent Nancy Youssef is here to explain the Pentagon's plans. Nancy, Kathleen Hicks gave this address last Wednesday, and you spoke with her ahead of it. Can you tell us what she said? Yeah, this is part of an initiative that she is leading in which the Pentagon would do a better job of removing some of the bureaucracy that stops companies that are providing smaller weapon systems, not the big ships and planes that we think about when we think of a Pentagon and military systems, but the unmanned drones, the satellites. These are systems that would be smaller, cheaper than what we traditionally think of as military systems, but also because of the technology are updated and changed. And so the idea is that rather than going through traditional weapons purchase systems, that the Pentagon would find a way to get these systems into uh, the warfighter's hands in two years. If it succeeds, you would see more traditional warfare Um, systems coupled with sort of new types of technology in places like the Asia Pacific. Can you tell us a little bit more about those technologies? And and are they systems that the U.S. has ever used before? What she described are in some cases are systems that we've already seen in the Middle East. For example, there's a group called Task Force 59, which was created in 2021, came about because the military was taking its ships and moving them away from the Middle East and towards the Asia Pacific. And so there was an admiral there who was trying to find ways to defend against threats from Iran without the sort of traditional capability. And so he worked with private sector companies to get drones and artificial intelligence across the sea in the Middle East region to get surveillance, to get eyes, to get a better understanding of what the Iranians were doing. Another scenario would be unmanned aircraft that would be operating or even operating in space. Some of the uh, other ideas I've heard out of the Pentagon is, let's say, a Marine serving in the Asia Pacific is injured, that Marine would get himself into a a non-piloted plane that would get him to a ship where he would receive medical care. You mentioned some of the technologies that the Pentagon is already implementing. So how far-fetched are some of the proposals that she was talking about? It's a great question because we don't know how much of it is going to be new technology that we haven't seen before and how much of it is going to be taking things that have been applied on one part of the world, for example, Task Force 59 in the Middle East, and adapting it and expanding it into places like the Asia Pacific. What they've said is that they're going to reach out to each of the services, each of the combatant commanders and ask them what their needs are and then go back to industry to kind of develop a list. Do we know how much this is going to cost? They've said that this will come out of existing budgets. She's put the number at hundreds of millions. uh, But at the same time, she said that there'll be thousands of systems that'll come out of it. So the question is, can you fund the kinds of systems that we're talking about at that number? Remember, some of these systems, unmanned water-based drones, for example, can cost several million dollars each. And so because we don't know the systems, we don't know if that figure will actually hold long term, or at least in this first iteration. Let's talk a little bit about the bigger picture. I mean, what's driving the Pentagon to take this new approach? So what's interesting is China, I I don't know if many people realize this, actually has more naval ships than the United States military does. Now, their ships aren't as advanced as the U.S., but in terms of mass, they have more. They're developing their own autonomous systems as well as a form of warfare. Those are two factors that are driving it, that if you the U.S. have as many ships, if it can't be ship-to-ship sort of warfare with the Chinese because they have more of them, are there other things that the U.S. can do to improve its warfighting capability? And part of it is a feeling that warfare is becoming more than just sort of ships and airplanes as we've seen them in the past, but really have to be married with more up-to-date technology, technology that isn't decades long, but something that can be updated and modified in a matter of months or years. Right. So clear up a little bit maybe of that bureaucracy, get these new technologies to the military uh, as as quickly as they can. I guess that's the plan. That's the plan. It's an ambitious one. And um, 
What I think is interesting about it is so often when we write about some weapon systems, or it's usually years and years of following something. This one potentially is within this administration, whether they can sort of deliver it. And then longer term, can it survive changes in administrations or officials who decide maybe this isn't as necessary or want different types of uh, autonomous or new systems? That was our national security correspondent, Nancy Youssef. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by me, your host, Zoe Thomas, with supervising producer Melanie Roy. For more tech stories, check out the Wall Street Journal's website, wsj.com. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.